Uh, so recently Runway added these quick action features, so I thought I'd walk through um, how to use them, what the quick actions are, uh, but also like what I've sort of found is like how to actually learn maybe how to use these models because uh, the particular interface with these quick actions like sort of obfuscates um, sort of how the model works and that can make it a little bit hard to understand how to work with things. Um, so let's just take a look. So um, one of the ones I've been playing a lot with is the remove backgrounds and then you think there's like a, a lot of uh, potential here for this being really, really helpful. Um, so when you use the quick actions and you click on this, you get a very different interface um, than you would in like just the usual, usual model uh, interface, right? So there's no input output, there's just sort of like browse through the files um, and then run commands. And what I think is cool here is that you do get um, like a, a little bit of a different look and feel for this. So um, if I just grab one of these images, um, you know, so there's two commands here, there's segment generate masks, we'll, we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, there's a threshold parameter and there's an output of image or video. Um, Obviously, this couldn't be a video, so uh, we're going to use image here. Um, but what I like here is there's this preview output. So uh, if you click this, it's going ahead and generating um, just sort of like a, this nice little swipe interface to sort of see what's happening, right? So obviously, this is going to remove the background. Um, what's really nice here is it looks like it works pretty well, right? So like it removes the text, it removes some of the background. Um, you'll notice it doesn't really remove these gaps, but like maybe for what I'm doing, this is fine. Um, so this is pretty helpful to see. Now, the thing is, like, I was trying to play with, like, what if I change the threshold here? So if I get this to 0 0.1, um, I don't think this automatically updates, right? So, like, that's kind of uh, a little bit of an annoyance here. Um, if I go back to inputs, maybe I do preview output. All right, so that seems to not even be working now. Um, so that might be a bug in the system. Let's crank it up to one and see if we can do something there. Yeah, so that seems to do something. Um, you'll see what's interesting there is it looks like it might have just removed this entirely. So the problem with this sort of interface is like I can't really play with it too much to really sort of understand what's going on. Um, I've got this swiping interface, but I can't really see it interactively in the way that I might through the other uh, like workspace interface. Um, so there's a way to fix this, or like just a way to work with it to set in a different mo in a different in the workspace model. Um, you go over here and you click View Model Info. Um, this is the screen you've probably seen before. This just sort of tells you how this whole thing works. It has links to the paper and the code. Um, so you'll find out this is actually a uh, model called U Square Net um, or U Two Net um, if you're into the band. Um, let's look at this inside of the uh, workspace that we're used to working in. So we're going to add this to new workspace. Um, I'll just add it here. Um, and I'm going to go and I'm going to add that file that I previously was using. If I remember where it is. Chance this one. Let's just grab this. <clears throat> it's not it. Um, let's give it one more shot here. Name. Well, let's just use this one, whatever it is. Mushrooms. All right. Well, this is good enough. This will be interesting to sort of see what happens here. Um, so now I've got this in my normal interface. I've got my input here and my output here. Um, let's just go ahead and run this remotely. And you'll see I have a crop here, right? So um, what's helpful here is like now I can actually maybe play with this a little bit more interactively and sort of see what this actual command changes. So at point 0.5, you'll see there's a little bit of bump and stuff here. Um, so let's see if I make this larger. Um, did it do much? Doesn't look like it did much there. Okay, so if I turn it down to zero, you'll see you get a little bit more of the edge, right? So this threshold um, is sort of like, sort of figuring out what the edge is. Oh, that's actually really helpful to see. So now that I've made it really high, you'll see it actually like cut out some of this middle of the mushroom. Um, so this is really helpful to just sort of play with. Like this is why I like using workspaces because I can understand a little bit more about how this thing works. Um, so you'll see even at this threshold, it's actually removing a little bit of the inside, which is interesting because now it's smaller than it was before, or it's 
looser than it was before, so it should be showing everything in the middle now. And this is the, the fun of machine learning models is that um, even when you think you set the same parameters, you might get slightly different results. Like now I'm getting the whole background. Let's try three. Yeah, so still, it's, it's kind of interesting that it's still not what I had before, which I thought was actually better. So, um, you know, clearly this model has some a little bit of wiggle in it, and um, this means that when we do like a batch export, it's gonna be kind of tricky to work with. Um, we'll sort of see what happens here. So now I've opened this again. So now I understand a little bit more about how this thing works, right? And one thing I should note is that there is a second command here. Um, you might see this in a couple different models. So there's a segment command. The segment command literally gives me the shapes. Um, so basically applies that mask um, to the shape and outlines these things versus the generate mask command, which um, we're gonna need to run this again. Go to file, open file, use the mushrooms again. And generate mask, so you usually need to run, set up the run again. And what this gives me is just the mask, right? So um, in this case, if you want just the mask, you wanna bring it into Photoshop and maybe do some edits to it, you could do it that way as well. Um, so what's nice here is you've got two different options here. Um, so now that I understand a little bit more about how this thing works, I can actually go back to the quick task and do like a batch export. Um, I could do a batch export from here, um, right? Like this actually is pretty much the same interface, so maybe let's actually just use it here. Um, so uh, let's do segment. Let's, um, what I like about this is it actually gives you a bunch of your other, your files that are already existing in your, uh, in your runway ecosystem, right? So a bunch of stuff you've uploaded um, for training or other data set usage um, already exists here. So I can go in here and I believe, maybe I can't, let me see if preview works. Yeah, so I can preview one of these, right? So I can see this one looks like it's working pretty well. Um, so now I could run a batch export on that entire batch, right? So this is, you know, probably 400 images, um, 494 to be exact. Um, you can see how much it's going to cost you. It says it's going to cost me 50 cents. That seems fairly cheap for like that many images. Um, so you go ahead and run this and export the batch. Now I've actually already run this. Um, so I come back over here. I think it got dropped in this one. Yep. So let's take a look at what we actually produced when we ran that batch. So as we saw, this image looks pretty good. You know, you'll see there's a little bit of uh, colors to the left from that background. So it's not perfect. It looks like it tends to miss some of these gaps or areas where there's tighter spaces. Um, this one looks pretty good as well. Uh, this one is clearly a problem. Like, I don't know what happened there, but it clearly erased much most of it. Um, this one looks good, except like really didn't get a lot of detail like carved out of there. That one generally looks pretty good. Uh, that one's also pretty good, although it looks like it might have taken out a little bit of the flower. So, you know, here again, like, this is a case of where maybe this gets you a little bit further than you uh, could uh, with use it without using Photoshop, right? Like, um, maybe doing this by hand in Photoshop would not be the best task. Um, I guess there's a flower here that got erased. Um, so, you know, hit or miss. This seems like it could be helpful. And maybe if you have one image, you can just do this preview output and be able to sort of, um, you know, do it on the fly and make sure it works exactly the way you want it to without using Photoshop. Um, but in my experience, if you wanna really batch a lot of these and get good results, you might need to be um, reliant a little bit more on Photoshop or something else to, to really make this happen. Um, so that was a quick overview of just sort of the quick, uh, the quick tasks that are available, um, quick actions within Runway. Um, there's a couple more of these that we might go over at some point. Um, but this also like shows you sort of how I would proceed with this. So like if there's a new one here, like the first thing I'm going to do is actually open up my workspace and play with it a little bit in that view before I do like a bulk action um, just to understand whether it's working or not. Um, so that gives you a quick overview of the quick actions and maybe how to approach them. Um, if you have any questions about the particular U-square net or just quick items in general, you can uh, join my Slack channel and ask questions there. Thanks.